Okay, welcome to another Monday morning. Okay, let's see where we are at. Content. And let's go to the students items. Actually, no, course outline here. Course outline. Zoom in a little bit. Is that enough? Good. All right, so let's see where we are at here. Today is November 7th. Oh, week 10. So we'll talk, we're, continue, we're going to continue with the scaffolds and ladders. Today we're going to talk about scaffolds. But uh, as I said, you know, I always throw something at you when it comes to pipe bending. So that's the first thing we're going to, uh, we're going to tackle today. And then we're going to continue with the scaffolds. All right, so uh, here is, Here is a pipe bender, idea of pipe bender. The ones, the, this is the one that we do have in our class. Um, and it has a blue handle. We also have, am I able to reach there? No, I'm not. But uh, there's also another brand that's quite popular, just as popular as the ideal is the Klein. And it has the orange handle, they work pretty much the same, except they have slight angle differences, but I'm not going to talk about that because it's, you know, I'm, I don't want to throw too much at once at you, all right? So what we're going to concentrate today on, just a little as a review. So here is the shoe, here's the handle, here's the foot of that. And if you notice right here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit right here. There is that sticker. Now, on this, uh, on our pipe benders that are in our class, uh, those pipe benders have been used so much that the sticker pretty much um, it can't even make out what that thing is. So what you could do is you could, you could go, where can you go? I'll tell you where to go. Uh, Google, and let me bring that up here. Here's Google, all right? So how about pipe bender guide, all right? Oh, that's clean and that's okay. So if that's clean, but we're looking at when we're looking at the ideal. So let's go to ideal, ideal pipe bender guide. And here it is. Okay, so this is the little brochure that is included if you buy a new pipe bender from Ideal. And if you scroll down, it's a pretty neat manual actually. Here is the how to make, uh, no, back to back. Let's go how to make offset bands, all right? And if you look at the offset band, because that was an offset guide, the sticker is an offset guide. If you look at this table, reference to offset bands, that's pretty much exactly what that sticker is. It's just presented graphically slightly different in a slightly different way. So let's take a look at this. I, I do have, um, just going to shuffle some screens. Um, <laughs> there, that's the magnification of the sticker. So if you look at this thing here, there's 22 and a half degrees. So all over here, we have the degrees of the angle. And that is that. So here's a here's an offset. If we want to continue with the bend with the conduit, and oh, we have encountered some sort of obstacle that we have to go above that and continue on the same above plane. So we're going to make an offset. We're going to bend it up and bend it back the same uh, way, and we're going to continue. So that's an offset. So here's 30 degrees, 22 and a half, 45 and 60, uh, these are the most popular angles when it comes to bending an offset. And if you go down with the uh, uh, brochure, uh, it, uh, you're going to see that table. So if you want to overcome two inches or you want to overcome, so here's the height of the obstacle. So that's the, that's this area right here. Uh, this is 
oh, I can. Uh, it's right here. That's the height. Okay, and they just have an example of six inches, right? But it could be you know different. So that is the height of this. So if you want to go up two inches, three inches, four inches, and so on, up to ten inches. All right, and now you have uh, the choice of the oops, I can't do that uh, of the angles. Right, so if you bend that 22 and a half degrees, or if you go under an angle, go up an angle 30 degrees here, 45 or 60. So you see, for like let's 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 take a look at the 30 degrees. So 30 degrees is, uh, applies to these two um, columns, this one here, and this one here, right? And we have two numbers. Right? So if we want to overcome, let's say six inches. And we want to go up. Uh, well, let's let's go four inches, right? If we want to overcome four inches, and if we decide to use thirty degrees, um, yeah, the first class did not go over time. We didn't miss anything. There was no first class. The eight o'clock class was not on because I had internet troubles. Okay. Uh, yeah, not a whole lot because it happened, didn't happen. So this is the only class that, that's happening today. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's take a look. So we want to go up four inches. Um, and we want to use the angle of 30 degrees. So we have the, the two numbers here, eight inches and one inch. What does that mean? Oh, well. Eight inches is the distance between those two, the two bands. So if you, here's the pipe band there. I'm just going to turn that off. Um, if this is, a, if this is our pipe, if this is our pipe, okay. And we want out of this pipe, we want to make something like this. All right, then we're going to have to make two band points. So this one is going to coincide with that, but that is going to be slightly forward, right? So we're going to have what our table says, if this is four inches, we need to make eight inches mark between the band points right here. So eight inches between the band points, okay. Come on, let me grab that screen. So between that and that is going to be eight inches. It's the table here, eight inches. And if we do the, if we apply the band, if we apply the, um, oops, yeah. Mm, yeah, let's make it a little bit smaller here. If we put that pipe bender like that here first, yeah. So that's gonna be the first band, I mean, over here. And then we're going to flip the pipe around and we're going to bend it back, all right? So eight inches between the two bands. And if we use 30 degrees, we are going to, uh, we're going to rise from the surface. We're going to rise four inches. Now, what's the other number here? That's not it. Here. Here. And here. What is the other number? It's one inch. That's the shrink amount. Okay, so this is the first number, is the distance between the two bands when we were, we're going to make an offset. And here is the one inch per inch of rise. So this is how much the pipe is going to shrink. How do we get that? How is it that we get that? All right, so remember the formula for this, for the, um, we wanna get those numbers. Now, actually uh, I'm going to show you this table here. So here is four inches 
obstacle, 30 degrees, eight inches between the two band points and the pipe is going to shrink one inch per inch of rise. Uh, all right, so now, if you look at this, this is the sticker over here. What am I doing here? Here is the, the sticker is right here on the handle. Right? And that's what it looks like. So let's say four inches obstacle. This is the offset uh, reference. Right? So we want to overcome four inches and we use 30 degrees and the bend uh, between two uh to two but the distance between the two bend marks is going to be eight inches and the pipe is going to shrink one inch per inch of rise okay actually this one here i think it's uh happening the one inch but let's just see here how is it going to uh how are we going to uh, accomplish this uh i lost it all right so the, in, the, the, uh, the, the, the rise is four inches when we're using 30 degrees. Remember the formula for the, uh, for the, uh, to calculate the distance between the two marks, which is the travel distance, All right? The formula is, um, uh, one over sine of the angle, which is right here this angle and um, and this angle right here. Uh, here. So we'll bend here and we we'll bend back. Uh, now, it's gonna be this angle here. Uh, so that's the multiplier. And the distance between that is the multiplier times the, times the, it's the multiplier times the rise. Okay, so sine of, our, sine of 30 inches, so 30 inches. Calculator, yeah. So how do we calculate the cosecant? Because one over sine is cosecant, but sometimes you're not going to have that, you're just going to have a sine. So let's just do the long way here. So what's the cosecant of one over sine of 30 degrees? So 30 degrees here, yeah, and in this calculator it works like that. So we're just gonna calculate the sine. So it's 0 0.5, but we have to flip it over. So here is the button. So it is two, right? Now two times four, which is in four inches of rice, times four equals, whoa, it is eight. Two times four is eight, who would have thunk? All right, so this distance here is eight inches. This distance here is eight inches, right? Now let's calculate the shrink, the second number, all right? Uh, how do I turn it off? Okay. Um, now, the for the shrink, the formula is uh, the shrink. shrink per inch of rise, All right? The, so the shrink equals sine of theta, and that you're gonna have to remember that, over one plus cosine of that angle. It's a little bit longer formula, but just, so what's the sign? Okay, we know that it is two because we already, uh, so no, sorry, zero, uh, zero, sine of theta is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, okay? So here is 0 0.5 because 30 degrees, right? 30 degrees sign, remember that's 0 0.5. Got it. So we got that. Now, what's cosine of 30 degrees? Let's just cancel it, right? 30 degrees, and here is cosine 
oh, it's 0 0.0, uh, 0 0.866, blah, 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 right? But it, it, we have to add one point, one to it, right? Because it's sine, blah, blah, blah. So over one plus cosine. So add, let's add one to that number plus one equals, right? It's 1.866. Let's put that in the memory. This is how you put it in the memory here. So, and this is going to light up. We have that in the memory, all right? So we can cancel that. The memory is still there. So, so let's just get that. Uh, um, uh, well, what was that uh, memory recall? 1.866. Well, let's just write it down. Uh, 1.866, and da, 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 there's something going on there, right? Uh, uh, now, so that equals, hmm, let's see. All right, uh, we know that 0 0.5 here. So, okay, let's just cancel that. We still have the memory going on. So it's 0 0.5 divided by memory recall equals 0 0.26, 0 0.26, all right, well, 0 0.27. Let's just say 0 0.27, 0 0.27. That gives us, this is the shrink per inch of rise. How many inches are we rising? Four inches. So let's multiply that by four and we're going to get the actual amount of shrinkage, right? So, Calculator, still we still have that. So that's that, the 0 0.27. Let's keep that there, multiply it by four times four equals 1.07 of an inch. Okay, well, let's look at the table here. Oh, it says one, which is close. Actually, it does. Sorry, I, I made a mistake saying that uh, it gives you the uh, per inch of rise. This table gives you the actual shrink. You don't need to do anything with it. Just, so here's the distance between the bent marks. And the, here's the actual uh, amount that the pipe is going to shrink. So it's going to get, it's going to shrink one inch. And this is how we got that. Where is that going to shrink? What do you mean by shrinkage? Well, if you have a straight pipe, it is going to have certain distance, like from here to here, okay? And if you do this sort of a, if you do this sort of a band to that, of course, that is going to kind of shift, right? So anything from that point is going to shift that amount, one inch. Why would you need to know that? Don't worry about that yet. Just, um, just know that this is going to uh, shrink just that much, All right? Uh, all right, so this uh, name, what's the name of the presentation you're showing in class today? Uh, I'm going to upload that after the second part of it, because this is the first part of the, uh, um, this is the first part of the week. So first class of the week, and it's almost Friday because it's Monday, so it's not Friday yet. And once we come to Friday, uh, we're going to have finish that second half of that. And that's when I'm going to release that uh, presentation. So let's just see here. Uh, all right, so we got the piping thing going on. Uh, so here is the table in the brochure. And here is the sticker of the pipe bender. So that's how you read that. If you want to go two inches, da, da, da. it's a quick reference. Right? So here is the mysterious sticker that, uh, that, uh, that, that is stuck onto the handle of the pipe bender. Now, where are we here? Here is the continuing of the scaffolds and uh, well, the safety of scaffolds and ladders. So we took care of the ladders uh, last time we saw each other last week. And today we're going to tackle the scaffolds. All right, let me just uh, make it a little bit more clear for us to see. All right, so this is a scaffold. 
and they have different shapes of forms. Some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller. And now before I, uh, before we go into it, um, when it comes to commercial construction environment, if there's some sort of a serious scaffold set up, you are going to get a company that rents the scaffolds and they're going to come over and set this thing up for you. However, sometimes you're going to have some smaller jobs that you're going to be required of setting up your own small scaffold. And that's that, 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 that's the information right now I'm going to give you um, some heads up uh, information on uh, what this thing is about. So if there is some sort of something goes wrong with the setup that uh, is done by the company, some company that rents that delivers that and sets it up for you uh you should be able to catch those so it's for your own safety and if you have some smaller uh job to do uh it that requires you to put then you should be able to uh tell um what you should what should you would what you should pay attention to all right okay so let's keep going with this all right common scaffold hazards Right. Now, this is the presentation. This is this is the type of lecture that I'm giving you some ideas here. They might not mean much to you or might may mean a little bit to you. And then as we go along, then this, what I'm showing you right now, is going to make more sense. So it's like read it once or go through it once and go back to it. So it's almost like you have to recycle this. Uh, uh, that this is how you read this kind of lecture properly. Okay, so come on. Uh, scaffold hazards or dangers. Right? No guardrails on scaffolds, defective wood planks, guardrails. Well, these are guardrails. When you walk onto the platform, on that you should you should have some guardrails so you don't uh, you don't fall. Defective wood planks. The wood planks is the the, the, the planks that you walk on. Uh, so uh, is is it defective or inadequate planking overhang? And we'll talk about what the overhang is. Uh, it could make you, uh, when you walk on, on on top of that, it, it could be unsafe. Well, what, what other hazards could be unsafe access to scaffold? You have to climb it and you have to get up there somehow. So uh, if it's an ac unsafe access, that puts you in a risk or, or, or um, yeah, in a risk of uh, falling. Right? Uh, cross bracing not adequate. We'll talk about what cross bracing is. Inadequate footings and bridging of the scaffolds so if you joined uh, if you join two scaffolds together so if it's uh, yeah all right um general requirements all right so you should erect or dismantle all scaffolds according to the manufacturer's instructions and or competent persons direction cp the person who's giving the directions how to set up they should be competent right there you go. So that's the competent person, right? So again, uh, general requirements for setting up the scaffold. It should be put together according to the manufacturer's instructions and competent person's direction. You should consider the capacity of the scaffold. The scaffold must must support four times the intended load. So if it is rated for hundred pounds, it should be able to withstand 400 pounds but it should be used for no more than 100 pounds it should have stable footings base plates screw jacks and mud seals uh let's keep going and find out what these are here all right general requirements continuing platform uh should be at least 18 inches wide so that will be the the whole platform that you work that you're working or walking on it so that includes the leather, uh, leather, ladder jacks, uh, pump jacks, top plate and roof brackets. Uh, well, actually, those can be 12 inches wide, right? But the scaffold, normal scaffold, should be 18 inches wide. But those here, there are an exception, they could be 12 inches wide. And we, as we go along, we will find out what these are. Front edge of age, front, <laughs> front, you can tell it's Monday. Front edge of all platforms within 14 inches of the face of work. All right. So, 
Where is my board here? Let me get a new board. There we go. So if this is a building, here is a building. It continues that way. It has some windows, all right? Uh, and it has some doors and maybe it has a roof with a chimney on it. That's where Santa has to get there somewhere, right? Okay, so, and if you have a scaffold erected right here, by the building, let's see here, and here is the scaffold and here are the platforms and whatnot. This distance here between that and that should be no more than 14 inches. That's what it says. What do they do? Here, okay. So the front edge of the platforms should be within 14 inches of the face of work. Exceptions three inches for outrigger scaffolds and um, 18 inches for plastering and lathing operations. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about that too. Scaffold must be capable of supporting its own weight, that would, which was already said, uh, its own weight and at least four times the expected load. And the expected load on the scaffold is the workers, the equipment, the tools, materials, whatever is on it. Okay. All right, mud seals. When you're working outside sometimes, um, it is going to be a construction site and the construction site is not really the finished product uh, for just a regular person off the street to walk into the building. The building is being constructed. So the ground might not be as, you know, uh, well, sturdy or hard or, or uh, sufficient for supporting all kinds of things. Uh, so you gotta keep that in mind. If, you, if your footings are too narrow and you have, in a, in, and you have, um, um, enough weight, that thing is going to sink. I can see question, I'll get back to it, okay? Uh, so you should have sufficient area that is going to support the scaffold, okay? Okay, now, masonry blocks and bricks are not acceptable as scaffold base. Over here, what you see, this is wrong. This never should be happening. That's dangerous. Okay, so this is that it's it's it says that masonry or or cinder blocks or whatever else blocks or concrete blocks they are not to be supporting the base of the scaffold. It's dangerous. Not supposed to do that. This is wrong. All right. Scaffold platform. Each platform on um, each platform on all working levels must be fully planked and secured to prevent movement. My brother is just calling me. He went deer hunting. I wonder if he got a deer. Maybe he's calling me to be happy. I'll find out later. All right. Uh, no more than one inch space between the decking platform units upper, uh, and upright support. So the planks should have no more than one inch of spacing in between. Wood scaffold plank must be nominal, two inches by 10 inches, and my, uh, must be scaffold grade planks. What are planks? These are the planks that you walk on. All right. So you see, these are over here, proof, tested. Uh, da, 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 where's the scaffold? Uh, okay, there you go. It says scaffold plank. When you buy those, it should be rated for scaffolds. Right? Two inches by 10 inches, at least. Okay. What else do we have here? No more than one inch space between. Uh, da, 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 must be scaffold graded planks. Ontario OSHA, sensor Ontario Safety and Health Association. 
Uh, all right, so um, let's keep going. Or occupational, safe and healthy association. Yeah, sorry about that, occupational. Uh, plank uh, with visible defects must not be used. This is a defect and it is uh, damaged and the damage is visible, which means you can see that it is damaged. Don't use it, right? There is one kind of a visible type of a damage and here's another type of a visible damage. Don't use it, you're standing on it. And if this thing lets go, well, guess what's going to happen to you? Uh, all right, do not use objects such as ladders, boxes, barrels, etc., on top of the scaffold platform to increase the height. What do we mean by that? pretty sure you know but I'm just going to I feel like drawing here all right so let's say here is a scaffold inside now let's just draw the cross braces here and there are some platforms here there's a platform here and let's say there's a roof somewhere here and you need to change a light bulb over here and you're standing You can't reach that light bulb. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna get a step ladder, put it there, and then you're going to stand on that, and then you can reach the light bulb. Okay? Well, that should not be happening. You can't use the step ladder or anything on top of the platform to increase your height. If you can't get it, you can't get it. You should get a higher, you should get a higher, um, scaffold or use other means of getting yourself up to this height. So again, do not use objects as ladders, boxes, barrels, etc. on top of the scaffold, plat scaffold platforms to increase the height. Planks extended six inches uh, past the support or secured. Planks need to be six, uh, extended six inches. Do we have the next slide? Yeah. Um, there you go. See, here's a plank that goes that way. See, remember, what's the distance? It's 14 inches. Right? This distance should be no more than 14 inches. Okay. But here's a plank and here's the overhang. So it should be six inches past the support. Here is the support and here's the plank. Right? Do not paint platforms. The platforms or the planks should not be painted. The stuff that you walk on. Why do we not? Why is it not supposed to be painted? Because the chemical consistency of the paint uh, can actually alter the integrity of the wood. So the way it's made should be made. Okay. Except for you can you can mark the edges of the of the planks right here for identification purposes. And over here, it says brace fully. Let's talk about bracing. Oh, here, see, there's a, here's a bracing. You see those cross braces. Right? Now, um, so we just have that here. It's a repeat of what we said before. For front edge within 14 inches of the face of the building. Right? And here is the scaffold plank that should go six inches past the support. So here's the supporting frame, and here are the planks. They should overhang six inches. We should use cleats. These are cleats. If this is just, uh, um, well, to prevent the movement, okay? So if this is just a plank, there should be, the plank should be equipped with the cleats. And sometimes the planks are ready-made with, um, with um, manufactured uh, mounting hooks. Then it's a little bit of a different story. Uh, if it was manufactured that way and designed that way, then yeah. But if you're just doing uh, that, uh, just using those regular planks, that thing should have cleats. So those cleats were, are going to um, 
prevent the movement of the planks. Right, scaffold access. Um, if the landing surface is more than two feet of the ground, then you need a ladder to step onto it. Right? So let's say ladders needed if access more than two feet of the ground. Do not climb cross braces. What are cross braces? These are cross braces. Right here. Over here and over here. And here and here. These are the cross braces. Do not climb them. They are not for you to climb. They are just to um, provide the structural integrity of the whole system. They are not to be walked on. Right? Ladders must, ladders must be positioned so they will not tip the scaffold, okay? Well, if there is a scaffold, very simple thing. And if you have a ladder that you're going to have, they should be positioned in a such a way, if you take a look at the whole system, that the once you have the scaffold and the ladder together, if you walk on it, it should not tip the scaffold uh just because you're working on the walking on the ladder that's basically what that says and well apparently there is a reason for that right access to and for from uh another surface such as window uh okay remember we should have no more than 14 inches from the uh from the um, from the face of the building or the whatever the work area so we talked about that and remember when we said about two feet, if if it's, uh, if the, the, the platform that you're stepping on is more than two feet, and what's two feet? Well, it is 24 inches. Okay. Um, then you need a step ladder. Well, here's the thing also, if, um, if there's any kind of other surface, there's any kind of other surface, that requires you to step on or off the platform, it should not be any more than two feet. Same as the ladder, step ladder or the ladder rule. If you if you have more than two feet, you need some sort of a ladder to step onto it. And same thing, what, what, what do I mean by this? Let me just go to my drawing board again. New. Let me get another clear board here without erasing that. All right, let's see. Let's say we have a building. Beautiful building. Oh, I can draw straight here now, right? All right, whatever. Okay, and here is a window. Here's a window. Here's a window. And if you have a scaffold here that is kind of parallel to the building, all right. And here's a platform that you walk on and it will be cross braces. There's another platform here. It will be cross braces here, cross braces, whatever. Okay, so this is platform that you walk on. Here's a platform that you walk on. Can you access that platform from a window? So here is the window and here's the phone. Phone is ringing, phone is ringing. Pink it up and say yellow. The phone goes green, green. So I pink it up and say yellow. <laughs> That's how we learn colors in English, children. Okay, so, uh, all right. So here's the window. Can you step onto this platform? Yes, you can step onto this platform from the window. But remember the two foot rule. If this is more than two feet of the ground, you need some sort of a ladder already to, to step onto it. Same thing here. It's if, if you're trying to get into onto the platform from the window, this should be no more than two feet down, okay, from this surface of the window, or no more than two feet up if you're, you know, if you're going to step onto it, okay? So that's basically what this says. No more than 14 inches away from the building and no more than two feet. And I, I think I'm saying this thing for like third, third or fourth or maybe fifth time. And there's a reason why I'm saying that. 
Can I ask you that on a test? Well, yeah, maybe. But also, you should have that embedded in your bloodstream. But when you see that on the construction site, you're not going to have your notes, classroom notes, with you all the time. So these are the basics that basically you should remember. Right? Portable access ladder right? uh, must be secured to prevent displacement. So the rules of the setting up the ladders, they actually do apply, same as um, you know, the ladders that uh, we used <clears throat> in the previous lecture last week. So what do we have here? The ladder must be secured. Remember, we have to tie off from the top and secure it from the bottom. And then the extension ladder, for example, if you like someone, usually going to have extension ladders, extend at least three feet above the landing to provide handhold. Remember that three feet rule? Yeah. One, two, three, right? Should have three feet above. Okay. So that's, uh, um, that's as far as we're going to go uh, with the first part of the scaffolds. And we're going to continue next time we see each other. So uh, to the other guys, to the other group, this is sections two, four, and six. But uh, I wasn't able to conduct the same lecture that we're doing now. But instead of 11 o'clock and 8 o'clock a.m., because I had internet connection issues, so spread the good news that uh, they can just watch the rerun on this one. It's just the nature of things. Sometimes internet goes down, but thankfully it was restored right now. Cool. So this is it for, for okay, uh, for today. Now, as far as the lab, as far as the lab, I remind there, remind there. Remind here, remind there, okay. Course outline, let's just get this thing here. There you go. Uh, course outline, no, that's not what I want. Actually, maybe I do. So what are we doing here? Week number 10, seven, it's just, uh, November 7, and it's Monday 7, it's always, almost Friday. Uh, Every day is almost Friday. So we're doing lab four. And lab four is the box offset. What is the box offset? What we're going to do? We are going to uh, make a, oh, you know, there's not much to keep here. So I'm just going to erase that here. Come on. All right. Um, here's a box device box, electrical box. And let's say this is the surface that continues. And here's another electrical box. And those boxes have knockouts. All right, the boxes have knockouts. And there's another knockout right here. There's another knockout right here. And the distance between this surface right here and that knockout is three eighths of an inch. So we're going to rise that pipe three eighths of an inch. So what are we going to do? We are going to make two box offsets because making one box offset would be too simple. You need to practice aligning things as well. And this would be a perfect opportunity. So the pipe, if you uh, uh, mount it, it will be a box connector. EMT connector, remember we were talking about those EMT connectors that goes into the box knockout and goes to the box knockout is mounted, right? If you just get straight pipe, yes, you can do that. Connect the straight pipe, all right? But you're going to have, you're going to have a bit of a distance here between the, uh, the surface of whatever the thing is and the pipe. So that's not a good uh, thing, okay? Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have that pipe against the surface, basically attached to the surface, all right? And then we're going to have to raise it 3 eighths of an inch on here and 3 eighths of an inch on here. So how are we going to do that? We're going to make a box offset remember 
it's going to be a small offset. So like that here. And so it fits the connector here. So that's what we're going to do. A one box offset on one side and another box offset on the other side. Right? So we're going to do something like this. The pipe is going to look like this. Here, 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 and here, and here. That's what the pipe is going to look like. And we're going to have to align it. So if you turn it, the the the, the pipe, if you if if you turn it like a you know, sideways, the pipe, it has to look straight. If you look from the top, this is a top view of the pipe. If you don't align things properly, you're going to end up with something like this, maybe. All right. So these things have to be aligned properly. All right. And this will be out called if, if you don't align things properly, you're going to have a dog leg, something that's called a dog leg. You know, when a dog's pee, they can, there is one leg. So that's what, uh, you know, that's the technical jargon for that. And of course, you're going to have to position those, uh, that pipe on both ends in the, um, uh, in the pipe bender. So you end up with something like this, okay? And you don't end up with something like this, <laughs> because it has to accommodate the box off uh, the, 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 the box connectors. Right? So, and we're going to give you a quick demo uh, in class and we're going to get a little bit busy, right? So uh, the demonstration is going to be in class. The rubric is already available. Um, thank you, Stephen, uh, for reminding me to put the rubric on. Now, um, Stephen had a question. To prepare for quiz two and test two, can we get examples of calculating the shrink step by step? Yes. Yes, and we already did that uh, uh, today a little bit, and I'm going to keep drilling that into you, so it's going to become a normal thing, and you won't have to um, you won't have to strain to remember how to do this. I'm going to give I'm going to feed you this thing one at a time, many times. Right? Cool. All right. So it's ten to twelve. You have other classes to go to, and it's Monday, which is means that uh, which means that it's almost Friday as I always say and that's a good attitude to have every day is almost Friday right and uh, I will see you when I see you um, when the when the time comes to it right or something like that cool guys have a good one and thank you for watching <laughs> bye